Hello, here is BB Walker. Welcome to my channel again. In today's video, we will use this virtual instrument, which is instrument that generates sound inside computer to feed the Boss RC505 loop station. And the interesting thing in all of this is that we will use the USB connection cable, no analog input. I mean, Boss RC505 has own audio interface, which is pretty cool things and you can do it to make a lot of interesting stuff. So if you are interested in, in more this topic, please stay tuned and we will start very soon. Okay, so the first thing that I need to show you is how to configure Boss RC505 loop station to work as audio interface. Because the standard mode that this device works in, you know, the in relation to the USB is the USB storage. Please check the video in the description. There is a video where I'm showing it how to backup your song using USB storage. So we are pressing system. And we are going right, right, right until we find option called USB mode. Yes, this is it, USB mode. And we need to switch to audio and MIDI. And if you go right one more step, we see the option called USB audio routing loop in, which basically means take my audio, which comes to USB and use it to feed my loops. And thanks to this, Instead of two inputs, I mean XLR, Phantom Power, Microphone Mono and one stereo, which is three separated tracks, you achieving one, uh, basically two, because it's a stereo input, into your loops, which is pretty cool if you want to use this looper uh, with computer, for example. So now let's switch to computer and continue. All right, so now we are in the computer, you know, mount system. And before we go forward to configuration the VST instrument to any virtual instrument, I would like to explain you the way why I'm doing it and actually what this uh, what this gives you actually what is the advantage of such a setup. Most of the people, 99% people on YouTube, you find music producers which use virtual instrument like the Sartori Analog Lab or FL Studio, Sidetruth, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter if they are synth instrument, if they are piano, acoustic, emulation, whatever, which is produced by computer, it's used within the AW software. So you basically have MIDI keyboard, you basically have laptop, you buy appropriate software, you buy some sound engine, which is probably sometimes included with the keyboard and DLW, and you play. So basically all your environment is, you know, is based on operating system on the CPU, which is inside your computer, inside your laptop. This is really cool. I mean, the producing sound in virtual way is great because we have access to so many vintage instruments, which are very expensive in the, you know, physical hardware form, like Jupiter 8, for example. It's a absolutely legendary instrument but you cannot buy it it's 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 like uh, i don't know to finding it it's um signed grail whatever you call it so basically thanks to the software we have access to great instrument and we can do it in our daw but the main disadvantage that really annoys me when playing with a Bleton live with playing with cubase or fl studio or any other daw that you have is that the your cpu power is limited and you actually don't know the limits first thing that you do if you start your virtual instrument is you know go to MIDI settings and set the HEO drivers, uh, set the buffer lens, the lower the better, but you cannot go too far down because you got this hissing, shuddered sound, latency problem and so on. So you are finding the, the optimal settings and you start playing with DLW and you add, add an, one track and it works. You add another track and it works, but something is going to happen. You change preset, you change voice, and now your sound doesn't work perfectly. You get problems. Why this happened? Because 
all virtual instrument, I mean, virtual instrument has different CPU performance requirements. Some of them are simpler, some of them are more complex with more, you know, computation power and everything is done in CPU. And if you add on it the DLW, which is online mixing, real-time mixing, and putting everything together, applying real-time effects, you cannot rely on the performance of your machine. Because this works and you get another track and it stopped working. So you need again go to Asia control panel and change the setting. It really annoys me anytime when I'm sit to computer and to work with something. And the solution that I personally use now is to use the hardware looper for mixing and recording waves. So this solution is not a hardware, it's not a software, it's a hybrid solution because we use software to produce sound, yes. We're going down less, but with a virtual instrument. So I have virtual instrument, but I am recording using USB. And this is the settings. So, as you can see, I get pretty low um, uh, buffer size, which is only 20, 288 samples, which gives me... Uh, six milliseconds I can change it I don't know but I'm because I'm recording if it allows me to change but I would like to show you where we are now in this oh, sorry I need to grab this okay so now you can see we are on the level four and the interesting thing about RC505 is that this is the Asia compatible device audio interface actually so you don't need another uh, device. As you can see on the intro, I only have a MIDI keyboard for tweaking and playing. I get laptop and this Boss RC505 connected with USB cable. So let's leave the settings um, of buffer size. And as I tested with many preset my liked sounds, it works perfectly. And everything is connected to Looper. And now let's record something and get the idea what's going on. So I got tempo 120 in Looper. I will clear the tracks. This instrument is one of my like. It's an acoustic plaque uh, by Nori Yubikata. So let's record. One, two, three, four. Maybe let's try again. So everything I done, I done on the looper. One, two, three, four. It's not perfect, but you can, you know, do it. The latency isn't very problem, it's only my playing now, I'm listening live. So we got one loop, and now let's try another loop. Let's change the instrument completely. Maybe something more aggressive. Oh yeah. Let's try. So again, I can start the loop, for example, the backing track, and when I'm ready, I could layer another one. Of course, the bit comes from Boss RC5, so I could disable it. And mix live. This little sound that you hear now is because I didn't turn off the mic, mute it so it get my speakers. But you get completely separated tracks, and you can download it to DAW software and make a final arrangement. But the advantages of it is that you have waveforms perfectly synchronized. 
on a separate tracks and with no latency problem. You can tweak the sound, so let's change to something. And solo, to practice for example. You don't need to record all the tracks on the loop, you can also practice. Okay, so you get the idea, I hope. So let's summarize. We use virtual instrument which produces sound on a computer. And we don't use the speaker system of the computer. We are taking this audio. And thanks to this that our looper has an audio interface. I believe many loopers has this feature because it's great. We feed the loop, the looper itself, with the output from our computer to record wave on the hardware. And this is why this is called the hybrid solution, because we don't do everything on the computer. We take the part where we are recording and synchronizing loops and move to external device, which is pretty reliable. It's much better than use a software on the software for the reason that I have mentioned before, because you don't know where the limits of your computer actually is. But when you tweak, uh, you know, tweak a sound, uh, doing here some crazy things, applying a lot of effects, whatever you need, for one single sound generation, you always have the enough power. If you have, you just, you know, decrease the buffer size and you're okay. Uh, but the rest is done by the hardware. So this is basically why I recommend personally using this approach, this hybrid approach. I'm also planning to make a video about comparison all the pros and cons of software or hardware and this hybrid, uh, and, you know, this, this solutions, the possible situation, the scenarios, how you are used. Because as I said before, 99% uses the 100% software. They buy some VST, they buy uh, some DLW, mix of them and play everything. It's pretty good, mobile, super portable solution, but it has limits. So I think it's full for now. If you have any question about, you know, this particular topic, how to mix them, of course, you can take another virtual instrument. You can start FL Studio, take the Citrus, take the Poison, any other VST plugin that you actually have. It doesn't have to be standalone analog lab. I take analog lab because I got this for free. So this is for, uh, you know, demonstration purposes, but it's really cool and fine sounds. Uh, you need to buy very expensive analog hardware synthesizer to reproduce this, but this for a couple of bucks, you get pretty nice sounds. But as I mentioned, uh, to be sure, to be more reliable, to don't have latency and performance issues, the great thing is to use the external device for recording and mixing them. And please also check the description, there is a video when I'm doing the opposite situation. I mean, after recording this loop and saving this preset, I take this from the uh, boss and put to computer, to Cubase to be specific, but you can also import those WAV files to, you know, your computer back again. Of course, this solution also has some disadvantages because we are not recording MIDI, we are recording audio. And if you want to know the difference between MIDI and audio recording and how they, you know, what the constraints are, what are the limitations of both solutions, please check the description. There is also a comparison between MIDI and audio recording. But in this particular scenario that I have presented today, we have the, you know, sound engine on a computer by recording and mixing and looping on the hardware. So on the external device and thanks to you, this USB audio interface is bi-directional. We can send it to, you know, device and go back again to computer, but we get this buffer. We don't need to worry about the issues, the limitation of computer. So 
Okay, stop talking. Please give me a comment. How do you like this kind of recording with this front camera and this software? And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and thank you for 7,000 subscribers. So it was BB Walker. See you later.